Hi everyone, welcome to our video on the second order partial derivatives. Now it is uh, just taking the derivative twice, just like it was when we didn't have mul these multiple variables. But let's show these notations here. So this is the second order derivative with respect to x twice. So you can see the little two there. And I'm just underlining the double x there. And then if it was in terms of z, well, we could write it as z. Okay, so these, these first two are the main ways. And really, the middle one is, is the main way. So the second order derivative, so that means we did the der this would mean we do the derivative twice with respect to x. This one is doing the derivative twice with respect to y. This one is doing the derivative with, with, with respect to x, and then afterwards doing it with respect to y. And then this last one, doing it with respect to y first, and then afterwards doing it with respect to x. Now, these two will be, or should be equal to each other, so that way you can check your answer when you need to, to uh, do these. Okay, anyway, so let's, let's break these down. Okay, so find all second-order partial derivatives for the following. All right, so let's number it. Uh, let, let's do... Let's do, uh, let's just say number one is let's do our second order derivative with respect to x here. Okay, so that, that's what we're going to do first. And then, well, to do that, so, and I'm going to try to keep it so we can do all four in this, in this region. So I'm going to do this all vertical here. Okay, so the first thing we need, really need, though, is to get just the first derivative with respect to x. Okay, so the first derivative with respect to x is we have the 8, and then the derivative of x squared would be 2x, and then y squared is just attached because it's treated like a constant, and then the derivative of 10x would be 10, and then the derivative of y cubed would be 0 because we're doing it with respect to x. Okay, and then let's, let's simplify. So del z, del x... This looks like it just becomes 16xy squared plus 10. All right, so that's the first order derivative. Now I want to take the derivative again to get the second order derivative. So we'll write this as del squared z, or it's not squared, um, del 2z del x2. So it's not squaring. It's the second order derivative with respect to x. Okay, and then similar to before, 16 is just hanging out. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative, well, not derivative, sorry, y squared is treated like a constant, so it's just attached. The derivative of 10 is 0, so then this is it, but we will just simplify. Let's finish it off here as 16 y squared. There, that's it. Okay, so this is the second order derivative, second partial derivative with respect to x. All right, let's do number 2. Let's do that in blue. Let's do the second partial derivative of z with respect to y. So that's what we're going to find in this one. All right, so just like the first one, I need to find the derivative with respect to y, just the first order derivative. Well, looking at my first term, uh, the 8 just there. The x squared is just there. The derivative of y squared would be 2y. And then the derivative of 10x is 0. The derivative of that y term would be minus 3y squared. And then again, let's just simplify real quick. So del z del y is 16x squared y minus 3y squared. All right, and then now I want to do one more time with respect to y. So del 2z del y2 like that is equal to, okay, so 16x squared is good. The derivative of y is 1. And then minus the derivative of this would be 6y. And then we'll just clean it up one last time. So del 2z del y2 is equal to 16x squared minus 6y. All right, so there's that. Okay, so, so let's just do a derivative and do it again. So no big deal. Let's do our third one. Hopefully we can fit it all here. Okay, so we're doing, uh, let, let's do this one. Okay, so notice the order's a little strange. Okay, so del 2z del y del x like that. Okay, so with this, so notice the order's a little different though when we write it. 
um, it is it is really we want to do the derivative with respect to x first and then the derivative with respect to y so this is x x is first and then y okay so what that really means is for for, for for this do the derivative with respect to x which we already have it's this one right here so let's let's just go ahead and copy that so it's del z del x is equal to 16 x y squared plus 10 and then now at this point our del 2 z and then del y del oops i wrote z again sorry del x okay so now we're doing the derivative with respect to y i'm just going to put with y Okay, so the derivative of this with respect to y would be 16x is there. Derivative of y squared would be 2y. The derivative of 10 is 0, so it all looks like it simplifies. Let's put it to the side. 32xy. So there's that. Okay, and let's get one more. Let's, I'm going to do it in purple. So the fourth one here, we need to do the del 2z and then del x del y. Okay, so this one is do y first, then x. Okay, so we'll, we'll squeeze that into this little region here. Okay, so again, we already have the y one done first. It's, it's here. It's that one. So we'll just copy that. So we've got del z del y is 16x squared y minus 3y squared. And then now we're doing it with respect to x. Okay, so we've got del 2z and then del x uh, del y, which is equal to, okay, so the derivative of this with respect to x, I have 16, and then x squared's derivative is 2x, and then y is just attached. The derivative of the second term would be 0, so then it all simplifies to be 32xy. Okay, and as we said in the, the right here, well, this portion, uh, these two, these two should be equal. So we did it. So we did it correctly. Okay. So um, that's a way to kind of check it. Okay. So I would still do both just to really verify. But if you did it correctly the first time, the second one should automatically match. Okay. So that's how we do these partial derivatives, uh, second order partial derivatives. Okay. So now let's do let's do one other where we have this g of x function. I'm going to break it up in the same way. Okay. So we're going to do first. Let's do the derivative, the second order derivative with respect to x. Okay, so really we need just the first order derivative with respect to x, which is looking like, okay, so this looks like it's a product rule. So this one's going to be a little bit more annoying um, with our 4x squared. So this, this here times this, this is a product where it's a product of multiple variables. So not just x times y. Okay, so like this first one, you could say, hey, isn't that a, shouldn't that be the product rule? Well, not really because it's it's x squared and then y is a constant, or it's x is a constant and then y squared. So it really is just just a uh, single variable when we look at it as partial derivatives. But with this, with x, I have an x term times an x term. So that means I do need to do the product rule here. Okay, so our product rule is the first one. The, the first one's derivative, so let's just write it as 8x times the second one, e to the 2xy, plus just the first one, 4x squared, times the derivative of the second one, which, as an exponential, is copy and paste, so it's e to the 2xy, but then times the derivative of this power. Well, the derivative of the power of 2xy would be 2 derivative of x is 1, and then y is just attached because it's treated as a constant. Okay, so that's what this whole thing simplifies into right there. And then, well, or, or that's its product rule. Now let's simplify. So I have g little x there, x comma y equals, uh, the first term looks like it's 8x e to the 2xy. And then plus this becomes uh, the the 
way I'm going to simplify, I think this 2 times the 4 will write as 8. And then I'm just going to put the y next to the x squared. So we'll do 8x squared y and then e to the 2xy's attached. Okay, so this is what this one looks like at this point. Now, it might be nice to factor, so it's up to us what we want to do at this point. I think, so right now we have a product rule and another product rule, so I am going to factor. So let's factor, let's just factor the e2xy out. I think that might make it easier. So one more step here where we'll have e to the 2xy times 8x plus 8x squared y. Okay, so this is our first order derivative in factored form because now I think it's easier to do it with the product rule. Okay, so one more time with respect to x. So I've got my double x now down there. Okay, so using the product rule, I would do the derivative of this e expression. So that's e to the 2xy times the derivative of the power, which would be 2y. The derivative of x is 1, so I'm just going to write 2y. Okay, and then the second one. Okay, so we're doing our product rule still. So 8x plus 8x squared y is attached. And then plus just the first part, just the e to the 2xy times the derivative of this inside the parentheses, which would be 8. And then plus the power rule tells us the 2 times the 8 would be 16x. And then y is just attached. Okay, so that's what this one looks like. Okay, and then at this point, this is kind of it. It's just we would want to try to simplify however way possible. Well, I'm going to do similar what I did with the first one and just factor the e to the 2xy out. So I have gxx x comma y is e to the 2xy. And then we're left with, um, okay, so I'm going to do another two thing in one here. This 2y I am going to distribute. So I've got 2 times 8 is 16, and then xy is attached. And then plus 2 times 8 is 16, x squared, y squared would be attached. And then we have our plus sign. That got factored out. And then it looks like we're left with 8 plus 16xy. Okay, so one final step would be to combine these two, because they have the same variable part. And then we're done. So g x x x comma y equals e to the two x y, and then we've got. Uh, I'll, I'll put this x squared y squared term first. So sixteen x squared y squared, and then plus thirty two x y, and then plus eight. So I think that's good. You could you could factor out an eight from the the this parentheses, but otherwise I think it's fine. Okay, so that one that one's tough. So the product rule made that one a little tougher. All right, well let's let's move on and see how the second one goes. We might need some extra paper. All right, so now I'm going to do the derivative with respect to y, the partial or the second order derivative with respect to y. So g little y y x comma y. All right, and then well the first step in this is to get g little y. So the first order derivative with respect to y. And looking at this, okay, so it is a product, but this time around, the, the x squared is treated like, let me just go ahead and write it right here next to it. So 4x squared e to the 2xy, this is treated like a constant. So that, that's just a constant. So that means I don't really have to do the product rule. You could if you wanted to. Um, it, would, it would work. Um, but it's a little faster if we say, hey, this is just a constant. So I'm just going to rewrite that term, 4x squared. And then now let's worry about the derivative of this. So the derivative of this exponential is itself, e to the 2xy, times the derivative of the power, but with respect to y. So the derivative of the power would be 2x is just attached. The derivative of y is 1. And then now we can simplify. So g the derivative of g with respect to y becomes, well, the 2 and the 4 would become 8. x and x would become x cubed. And then e to the 2xy still attached. 
Okay, so this is the first order derivative with respect to y. And then now let's do the second order. So g, the derivative of g, the second order derivative of g with respect to y becomes, again, the 8x cubed is just a constant. It's just hanging out. And then the derivative of e to the 2xy is itself times the derivative of the power, which would be 2x times 1 again. The derivative of y is still 1. And then now I can clean this up. We have g, the partial order derivative. Second order partial derivative with respect to y is, it looks like 2 and 8 is 16. x cubed and x is x to the 4. And then e to the 2xy is still attached. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so there's our two. Now, the, the tricky part, let's see, probably not really with enough room. I'm going to do it. I'm going to still try to put it in here. Number three is we want to find the partial order derivative with respect to x and then y. Okay, so this is now x is first. So just kind of pointing at the x first. So that really means we should get g x, x comma y just rewritten. Okay, and that, that's right here, and it's factored, uh, or in its, yeah, I guess it's in its factored form. Okay, so we have e to the 2xy, and then times 8x plus 8x squared y. Okay, so to do this second order partial derivative, now, uh, now I'm doing it with respect to y, this still will require the product rule based on the way that it's set up. So now we are doing it with respect to y, though. Okay, so our partial order derivative with respect to y of this function above, well, it is requiring the product rule. e to the 2xy's derivative is itself times the derivative of the power with respect to y would be 2x. And then we'll copy and paste the second portion there, 8x plus 8x squared y. And then plus, okay, so then now I'm just copy and pasting the first term using our product rule. It's e to the 2xy times the derivative of this with respect to y. Well, the derivative of 8x with respect to y would be 0. And then the derivative of this with respect to y would be just 8x squared. Okay, so that's what this one looks like here. And now I just want to try to simplify the best we can at this point. I am going to, so sorry, I'm going to go into the next page just a little bit so that we can fit it all or, or, or write it all in this video without opening a new Word document. Okay, so let's simplify. I'm going to simplify by first just factoring out this e to the 2xy because it's common in both. Okay, so we have g, our partial order derivative of g with respect to x and then y is e to the 2xy. And then in here, okay, so I'm going to distribute the 2x through. So I've got 2x times 8x is 16x squared and then plus 16x cubed y. And then over here, I still have, oops, no parentheses, sorry, not yet. And then I still have the plus 8x squared. Okay, and then one last step. Looks like I can combine the x squared terms. So we have the second order partial derivative with respect to x, and then y is e to the 2xy, and then times, so 16x cubed y I'm going to write first. 16x squared plus 8x squared would become positive 24x squared. Yikes. Okay, so that, that one, this one I, I should have given myself a little bit more room. Okay, so, but that is the third partial, or that's our third problem. One last one. So if we did things correctly, if we did things correctly, the partial order derivative of, of this function with respect to y and then x should equal this. It should be the same thing. Okay, but let's let's see um, let's see what we can do with it. I'm going to just I'm going to keep it on this page. Okay, so it's going to be a little messy. I'm going to put it in this number four way over here, 
And so what we want to do is find our second order partial derivative of this function, but we do it in a different order. So this time around, the derivative is, our focus is y first. So let's go ahead, that one's right here. So we've got it already, so let's just copy that which is equal to the 8x cubed e to the 2xy. Okay, and we're doing this now, our, our second order derivative. Now it's with respect to x. So from here to here, it's with respect to x. And while well, that means I need to use the product rule again. Okay, so our product rule tells us, let's put in parentheses. So the derivative of this first part was 24x squared times just the second, which is e to the 2xy, and then plus just the first part, 8x cubed, times the derivative of the second part, which is the same function, e to the 2xy, times the derivative of this power, but with respect to x, which would be 2y. Okay, and so what we want to do is just kind of show that these are the same. All right, so if we factor out the e to the 2xy, that's that. Okay, so that's been factored out. And then inside, so I want to see if it matches this in the parentheses. Well, it looks like I already have 24x squared as a match. Once that got factored out, there is that. And then when this multiplies, 8x cubed and 2y... Well, 8 times 2 is 16, x cubed is there, and y is still attached as well. So it is the same. So that's why I wanted to just squeeze it in, because I did have the answer, but it's all scrunched. So sorry about that, but um, that that is it. Okay, so the product rule is kind of nasty, especially if it's you have to do partial derivative twice. But just like with regular derivatives, it's kind of nasty as well if you have to do it twice. Okay, so anyway, so with these problems, so the first one's not too bad. First one wasn't too bad, I thought. Second one, be patient on these more complicated functions. Just make sure you're still just applying the rules. Keep it organized. Okay, so that's that. So if you do have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.